Okay, here we go. We are going to discuss Zack Snyder's Justice League that was released yesterday. What I think about it, how it compares to the original Josh Whedon film back in um, 2017. Yes, 2017. Um, I have some notes various places here, so if you see me looking off, that's what's going on. Um, okay, so off the bat, let me just say I enjoyed Zack Snyder's Justice League. I, I gave it a an A on the letter grade, and if you're going to go with um, numbers, I'll, I'll say a 9. I, I thoroughly enjoyed the movie despite its runtime, and I'll get to that in a second. So... But let, let's go back a little bit to uh, Josh Whedon's Justice League 2017 and what went wrong there, in my opinion. Um, you can disagree, that's okay. I, I just think that movie was trying to do too much, too many characters in too short a time. And it showed... You, you can't tell me you watched Justice League and had even the remote, the, the, the slightest idea what the hell was going on with Flash and Cyborg and they just shoehorned these guys in there and said, hey, make an entertaining movie and guess what? It, it didn't work. Did anybody even care about Cyborg in that movie? All we know is he, his dad put him back together in the lab, he met Wonder Woman, and next thing he's, he's fighting Stephen Wolf. What? Flash, goofball, trips over stairs, can't run to save his life. I, I don't know what was going on with Flash, but Ezra Miller, I guess, did the best he could. I'm not a big Ezra Miller fan, but whatever. That's neither hand nor there. And this, I think, came from the fact that Avengers had done so well but keep in mind Avengers was 10 years that they they had this this plan out for okay don't get it twisted they didn't randomly put Avengers together they, 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 they knew what they were doing come on we started with Iron Man I think it was 2008 and then we finally ended up um, with Endgame in uh, 2019, a couple years ago. And all the build-up in between. We, we, we're talking uh, Hulk with uh, Edward Norton, although he was not really in that universe, but apparently he was, uh, you know, Mark Ruffalo came in, uh, you know, um, with Avengers, but then you had, then you had Thor and... and, and, and and um, who's the other main person? I, I don't even remember. Oh, Captain America. Oh, hello. How did I forget that? But all these individual characters got a backstory. You, you got to invest some time in learning about these characters. And then you finally get the Avengers. And then Infinity War Endgame. It, it, it was done well. And that's why it was so successful. Because people cared about the characters. Back to Justice League. We got... Uh, Man of Steel, good flick, too much destruction, but whatever. I still think it was good. Wonder Woman, first one, haven't seen Wonder Woman 84. Apparently, most people say it's not even worth it. So, first Wonder Woman, great flick. Green Lantern, woo! I like Ryan Reynolds, but I don't even know if that was part of the DC, you know, timeline that they were heading for here because Greenland didn't even make it into Justice League so whatever we got Aquaman after the fact pretty much you know I think he came after wasn't he released after Justice League so we got Justice League and then we get Aquaman like whoops you could tell that this was not as planned out as Marvel was and so poor Zack starts production he wants to flesh out the characters. And to, to flesh out characters in two hours, that many, when you haven't built up a past like, like Marvel did, <laughs> impossible. So he went and probably was halfway through filming and it was at already two hours. His daughter had what happened to her happen. He left, understandably so. They bring in Josh Whedon from Avengers to inject his style into the movie. And... 
kind of threw him under the bus. It's like, oh, by the way, hey, this guy has already put in this much work, but it looks like he's running a little long. So we're going to need you to make some changes to get it to two hours and change or whatever however long the original Justice League was. So he came in, did his thing, tried the best he could, I guess. It just didn't work out. It wasn't Zack Snyder's vision of what he wanted to do with the Justice League. What he had in mind, the totality of his experiment, you know, with there's so much material in Justice League, the, the um, unlimited cartoon series, the books, Injustice. I mean, there's just so much you can pull from. And, and Zack saw this. And he had to do this all in a movie. Which brings me to the point of people um, complaining about the, the runtime. You know? Four hours is four hours, people. It's not a, a TV series, okay? It's not the Vampire Diaries or Supernatural that you have to invest a year in your life just to finish watching them. I know I've done it. Well, not supernatural, because I was following that all, all along. Um, but the point is, everyone is saying it's it's four hours, it's too long. Newsflash, you don't have to sit down and watch four hours in a row just because it's a movie. Says who? Break it up. Do it one hour here, one hour tomorrow, one hour next day, however, however you want to do it. I did two hours, went to work, came back, did another two hours. Okay, I spaced it out. My sister and her niece, they did four hours straight. She was done with work. They barely made it until you know, midnight. But that was on them. They got excited. And I get it. If you're excited and you want to see it all in one sitting, great. But don't, don't, this critique some reading online about the movie is too long. Shut the hell up, okay? The man had to introduce an entire cast of characters properly this time because of all the complaining that happened the first time and now you're bitching that it's too long you've g go sit down somewhere okay you 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 sat through schindler's list shawshank redemption lord of the rings you made it through those and those were not one and a half hour movies okay so be quiet split it up get an intermission go get some some coffee and coca cola whatever whatever the kids are drinking these days Watch two hours, come back, watch the second two hours, okay? Squash that complaint. This is just the way it is now because, you know, the, the, who knows when the theaters are coming back because of, you know, the coof. So, this is, get used to having to probably see longer movies if people having to, now that they have streaming services and they can do that, they don't have to worry about people getting tired in the movie theater and not buying enough popcorn to keep them going. You're at home, space it out. If it's a long movie, so what? As long as it's exciting, and this was. So, that's my whole issue with the runtime. People just need to let that go. Now, could this have been put in a theater? As a result, no, because it was too long. So, that's fine. Okay, put it on streaming, that's great. But let's get to the characters uh, in this cut. And we're we're going to start with... Um, cyborg thank goodness they fixed this guy i think the cyborg character was great they talked about how he got in the accident that pretty much killed him his father brought him back i actually understood what was going on with the mother boxes and like the first movie i don't know what the hell i was going on with that so we understand cyborg now he's actually a cool character with some emotion his powers on screen time way more interesting um same went with with flash not as much uh flash did show some some more um of the cartoon powers you know him being able to uh, uh, effect well i won't spoil anything but you've probably seen it if you're watching this you've already seen it so whatever he um spoiler him being able to affect time you know run faster than light none of that stuff was really shown in the first justice league it was here and i thought it was done pretty good Ezra Miller still can't run to save his life. I hope this is not how this brother runs in real life. He just looks like... I, I, I can't say the word because that's no longer allowed in 2021, but it starts with an R and it ends with a D. You fill in the blanks. Nobody runs like this. No wonder he's tripping over stairs and crashing into Aquaman. You, you, you're running like... You... Plastic hats. Anyway. 
So that was good. Wonder Woman. Wow, man, Gal Gadot is just. Whew. They could not have picked a better person for this role. She nailed it. I don't know what happened when uh, WWE 84 because I didn't see it. So I'm just going by the original Wonder, Wonder Woman movies. Batman v Superman when she was in that. And in this movie here, they just cut her loose. Zack let Wonder Woman be Wonder Woman from the cartoons. None of this, this tiptoeing around the bad guy stuff, man. No. Kick tail, okay? Aquaman was Aquaman kind of more serious this time around uh, but it's okay Jason Momoa did his thing got no problem with his role does that's, that's done very well Batman kind of took a bit of a back seat he wasn't as much of a jerk as he is in Justice League Unlimited and the, like the cartoons where he's like it's my way or the highway I mean he, he tried to hint at that a little bit towards the mid towards the end part before they took off to go to um, that Russia or wherever the heck it was um, where the dome was but for the most part he was cooperative with them and they actually seemed to function as a team and have a plan and Batman wasn't just a jerk Wonder Woman had her input you know Aquaman kind of stood on the sidelines because that's not really his thing you don't plan wars and all that kind of stuff he's, he's just there to take care of business so I like what they did with the characters um, Superman, Black Suit, Superman, I don't know much about Black Suit, Superman, I've never really read any comics with Black Suit, Superman in, so whatever, if you have, that's great, I haven't yet, don't kill me, but I was okay with it, eh, you know, he showed up, you know, whooped tail like he should, and the story with him getting back with Lois and his mom, I mean, that was a little bit draggy, but uh, it's okay. I didn't, I didn't mind. I, I did not mind because of how the chapters were set up, the pacing. It, it, it worked for me. I did not have an issue with it being slow and he was reconnecting with his family. That The man was dead for crying out loud, okay? So he comes back. He, what do you want? Just to fly off and start, you know, whooping ass after being dead for, for a year or however long he was down there? Come on, Superman or not. Give him a break. He had to recharge. Typical crucifix pose in slow motion. That's Zack Snyder for you. So, so okay, so yeah. So that was the uh, the heroes. Now the villains. Dark side. He wasn't wearing his cheerleading skirt with his hands behind his back pose that he always does in the in the uh, cartoons. But that's okay. I I like the look. We got a little glimpse of the Omega Beams. I thought that was kind of cool. And this guy really is one of the nastiest characters out there. I'd love to see him versus Doomsday. If anyone's listening to this, probably not. But if anyone does, man, that would be one hell of a confrontation. Doomsday meets Darkseid. And, and, and I'd throw Brainiac in there. I think they did that once in the cartoons anyway. Brainiac versus Darkseid. That was good. Um, there was Stefan Wolf, the new armor. That was pretty awesome. Looked good on looked good on screen. He wasn't as much of a wimp as he was in the first Justice League. It's like he was a he, he was just sorry in that one. I mean, he kicked some tail, yeah, but whatever. This time around, though, this guy was really up until Superman showed up. He was handling his business against some some pretty good competition. <laughs> and the Batmobile. Oh man favorite Batmobile for me obviously is Michael Keaton's Batmobile from uh, you know that I think 89 um, with him Jack Nicholson that Batmobile Michael Keaton was Batman Jack Nicholson was Joker um, this Batmobile here just reminded me the, the, the action scenes with it just reminded me of uh, um, Arkham Knight it's a game if you guys ever played it where you the Batmobile was like the focus of that whole game and they did not stimp on the action. It was a short on screen time, but the time it was on the screen, the Batmobile kicked tail. And I'm a huge Batmobile fan, so I, I was appreciative of that. So yeah, uh, that about wraps it up. I want to see where this is going to go with the injustice kind of timeline that they're showing that towards the end or dark dark side 
coming back. They, they kind of left it open. Is that going to return to finish his vision and probably give us another go round with Henry Cavill and Gal Gadot and, and Jason Momoa and all these guys? Even Ezra Miller, you can come back too. And I forget the cyborg's name, Ray, Ray something. I don't remember his name, but that guy, if, if they're not too old and they don't, you know, they still want to do it in a couple years, maybe. But I wouldn't hold my breath on it. But it would be nice to see because I do think the Snyder Cut was was very entertaining. If you haven't seen it yet, check it out. Um, legally, friends, family, or whatever that have HBO Max and you know sign up for. Um, even if you just sign up for this, <laughs> there's some other good shows on HBO Max. But this was the main reason I used it legally but anyway thank you for watching and um, I hope you enjoyed the video and if you do give it a thumbs up it's my first one so don't kill me and um, if it does okay maybe I'll make some more alright take care